Hi there. The holiday season is here once again, and I always know it's here when I see the annual fruitcake sighting at Walmart. It's rather frightening that this fruitcake has an expiration date of six months from now, even without having to soak it in alcohol. Of course, many people turn their noses up at fruitcake, even though they've never had it before in their lives. Fruitcake has a terrible reputation, and that's a shame since fruitcake is a modern-day version of the classic Christmas pudding, which was an important part of the holiday celebration for many years and even centuries before the development of modern-day fruitcakes. When it's made correctly, a fruitcake is quite delicious, and it really should be something to look forward to. And that's why in this video, we'll be making a fruitcake in the classical manner and stuffing it with fruits and nuts before soaking it in liquor. If you'd be kind enough to watch for the next several minutes, I hope this helps to show you what a fruitcake is really made of, and I especially hope it makes you want to give it a try. Fruitcake is one of the easiest cakes in the world to make, and the hardest part is preparing all of the fruit in advance. It's not really difficult, but it does require chopping up a bunch of dried fruits, then soaking them in wine overnight. Since this is your cake, you can use whatever fruits you think will go good in this cake, but I really don't recommend using those huge radioactive tubs of fruitcake mix from Wally World. They are a big reason why fruitcake has such a terrible reputation, and a fruitcake is actually delicious when you use the fruits that you want in it. This isn't all the fruit we'll be using, just the fruit that will be soaked in wine. Pour in enough wine to cover the fruit, then add some rum for extra flavor. Cover the bowl and let it soak overnight, though some folks soak their fruit in wine for weeks or even months before using it. After looking all through my area for candied orange peels, I realized I'd have to make them myself, because no way would I ever use those hideous tubs of fruitcake filling at Wally World. And I'm glad I did, because it was far easier to make these than I expected, though it helped that I had a good quality vegetable peeler. This allowed me to peel two oranges and have almost none of the bitter pith. It was simply a matter of blanching them for 10 minutes, draining the water, and blanching them again a second time for 10 minutes. Then making a simple syrup out of one cup of water and one cup of sugar. After simmering the orange peels in the sugar syrup for about 30 minutes, they were glossy and translucent, and most importantly, tasting one gave a sweet orange flavor with just a hint of tartness. And we place them on a rack to dry out, and we have candied orange peels that are much better than the ones in those dreaded plastic containers. The next step comes from Jamaica, where some of the most dangerous fruit cakes in the world are made. They regularly use a browning sauce in their fruit cakes, which is nothing more than brown sugar melted over high heat. Add brown sugar to a cast iron pan and stir it for several minutes until the sugar melts and looks like this. Now we carefully add water to the melted sugar. The steam is very hot and you have to be careful because you could get a steam burn from this. Mix it until the clumps of sugar have completely dissolved. And this is what they call burnt sugar syrup. And finally, we chop up some extra fruit that we don't soak in wine, including more dates, and add some golden raisins to the mix, plus chopping up some maraschino cherries. I also found a package of mixed nuts, plus some extra fruit, that we can add to the cake. And now, at last, we're ready to make a fruit cake. We start by preheating the oven to only 300 degrees Fahrenheit. The low temperature is because this cake is so thick and heavy that we don't want the outside to be overbaked and even burned while the inside is still underdone. So we'll be baking this cake low and slow. It's simply a matter of adding the dry ingredients together and this year I doubled the regular amount of spices because I want folks to be able to taste them. We whisk the dry ingredients in order to help incorporate air into the batter, and then we add our wet ingredients into a separate bowl. We could use a mixer for this, but with an old-fashioned Christmas cake, I like doing it the old-fashioned way by hand. 
After creaming together the butter and sugar, we mix in the eggs and vanilla extract, then mix the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. This batter may not seem wet enough, but that's because we'll be adding the wine soaked fruit. And after draining the fruit, it goes into the batter. Now we add the other fruits that weren't soaked in wine, including golden raisins, some candied ginger, sliced maraschino cherries, and the candied orange peels. Now we add the browning sauce into the batter, and finally, the crushed nuts. This cake is certainly going to have a lot of variety with its filling, but because we made it ourselves, we were able to add the fruits and nuts that we wanted in this cake. This batter is very thick and hard to stir, and this is probably why the classic tradition is for the entire family to help stir the pudding before it's boiled. Once the batter is ready, we have one more thing to do, and that's prepare to grease the cake pan. While it's possible to grease and flour the pan, I like to use an easy mixture that they call baker's goop, which uses equal parts of flour, shortening, and oil. We mix it together, and now we can bring out a cast iron cake pan. Brush the baker's goop over every inch of the inside of the pan, and we can start scooping the batter into the pan. In fact, I made a mistake here, and I filled this pan all the way to the top. I didn't expect it to rise as much as it did in the oven, and I'd advise only filling the pan about three-fourths of the way when you do this. But here it is, and it's now ready to go into the oven. It took a full hour and 40 minutes to bake this cake because it was so thick and heavy, so after letting the cake rest for 20 minutes, the question was whether the cake would be able to come out of the pan without sticking. I guess I should say, the last time I made a fruit cake using this recipe, it did not rise anywhere near as much as this. <laughs> Although admittedly, the last time I used two 10 inch cast iron skillets. I wonder if the shape of this pan here may have had something to do with it. Well, all we can do is give it a try see what happens. Obviously, I very much hope this comes out successfully. And, well, <clears throat> there's only one way to find out. Easy enough. There we go. One last try. And now, moment of truth. Aha! We have success! <laughs> cake really rose more than I expected and this may be one of the most dense cakes I'd ever made. Maybe that helped. But it's successful. <laughs> we have a massive fruit cake. All of that work paid off and now we have a classic fruit cake and that means we can prepare it for Christmas. 
This means we get to soak the cake in liquor and let it ripen. And we do this by soaking a length of cheesecloth and rum so we can wrap up the cake. Next, we poke holes in the top of the cake and drizzle rum over the cake to let it soak in. And then we wrap up the cake in the cloth. And finally, we add still more rum and let it soak in through the cheesecloth. Then we cover the cake and into the refrigerator it goes to ripen for a full month until Christmas. As we wait until Christmas, about once a week, we'll be taking the cake out of the fridge and pouring more and more liquor over it. And when we finally reveal it on Christmas, it'll be ripe and ready for serving. Although you probably should serve a non-alcoholic cake to the designated driver at your Christmas party. You could do this with a store-bought fruitcake as well, but it's so much more satisfying and more delicious when you take the time to make your own fruitcake and prepare it in the classical manner. When done this way, this fruitcake isn't something to use as a doorstop and defend yourself from robbers when they break into your home. It's something that people will actually look forward to eating, just as they did in the days of yore with the original Christmas pudding. And baking the cake in a cast iron cake pan certainly helps to add to the sense of tradition and history. I'm looking forward to revealing this cake on Christmas, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this because it means there is no longer only one fruitcake in the world. Now there are two. And if you've enjoyed this, you may want to make your own fruitcake and share it with your family as a Christmas tradition. Thank you for watching.